welcome back to the channel. Let's go slay some white bass today. We're gonna idle around a little bit and try to find these schools of white bass. I haven't done any putting in the grease of any white bass this summer, so it is time. And today's video, y'all, is brought to you by long time partner and just great friends of the channel, Mystery Tackle Box. Let me tell you about why Mystery Tackle Box is awesome. Number one, you're getting great stuff bundled into a box together that's gonna save you money. So if you went out and you were trying to buy all these things individually, you'd end up spending a lot more. And plus, they pick out lures that are good for that particular month, and then they just put them in the box and send them right to you, right to your doorstep. You don't even have to think about it. Just saw one jump over there. If you are new to this channel and you want to get signed up for a mystery tackle box, you've never heard me talk about them, I'll leave a link down in the description. You can get signed up for as low as five bucks on your first box. Click that link down there. The code is Mondo. The code is Mondo. That's how you're going to save five bucks. And then you can start getting Fishmas in a box to your doorstep every month. Oh my goodness, we have found the pod, ladies and gentlemen. This little bagley right here imitates those small little shad that they're chasing down right now. So let's get to them. <laughs> oh, on the ultralight, it is too much fun. Too much fun on the ultralight. Not gonna be able to unhook him fast enough. Hook dip. Oh, hook sideways. You ever drop your camera in the lake? A couple times. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. <sighs> I'm talking about like 50 yards wide of of fish just schooling. I've got another one on here. It's insane. You may notice I'm wearing my Lake Louisville White Bass Rodeo Championship shirt. I'm not on Lake Louisville today, but that's what a lot of the guys call me because I I don't know. I enjoy catching white bass. I love eating them. And from my experience, a lot of bass hang around their schooling activity. Where are those donkeys at? This lure right here is just, uh, it's, it's insane. Me and John did a, a video um, featuring this lure and catching white bass one after the other, just slabs. And they were down deep, but the way I'm fishing it right now, literally just reeling it in. That guy's not, he's on the edge, but we're not gonna keep him. Now that the action's calmed down, let me tell you about what happened yesterday. It's like my fishing experience yesterday, and you guys gotta just pay attention to this. It's full moons in the summer, no joke. There's another fish. Full moons! Absolutely devastating to fishing. You know, here in Texas, it is 100 degrees here. We are looking at full moon fish feeding at night and then the day fishing just being bad. This is a keeper right here. Yeep, buddy. Ow, gosh, you got me. We'll put this guy in the cooler. Full moons, ooh, yeah. 
can be extremely tough in uh, whatever you're doing in the outdoors. Like if you're, if you're hunting or fishing, uh, salt water is especially sensitive, but fresh water too. I mean, it could be really, really tough. Shad have just spawned too, and uh, you'll see a lot of tiny, tiny shad, and you'll see both largemouth and white bass, just depending on where you are, chasing tiny little shad like that. So that's why I'm using this, this Death Stalker. Plus they like, they love spoons, they love flash. This thing's got a, uh, a little blade on the back. It's perfect, perfect for this. You can catch them out deep with it and catch them up shallow. But uh, the bass fishing's just, yeah, it is a doozy, it's tough. I just wanted to come out and have some fun and get some meat. I'm literally out of crappie, I'm out of white bass. Uh, I hardly have any catfish left, so it's time, it is time to slay and I need to find some more hammers here. See old Largy. Come here, bud. <sighs> Gotta mix the old green one in there every once in a while. Yep. I found this this white bass area, but there's one little section that has uh has some large mouth on it too. They're going absolutely bonkers on this point. Now you're digging. Now you're digging. There's a keeper. Get away. They're just pushing them up on this flat. Pushing them up and annihilating them. Just got bit. Just got bit. Tapping it. Oh. Chasing it. Got him. Sometimes with this bait, you just gotta let it drop just a, just a second. Oh yeah, we got him now. This feels like a good one. Yes, sir. There's a good one. And he's got more with him. That's a good sign. Nice, healthy. Well, But too, if I fish this point, this real sharp point here, I might catch a large mouth. Small. You were not ready for the grease. Not big enough. I want to show you all the size shad that they are chasing. This includes a lot of bass right now too. Just look at that little guy there. And that's what we have going on. So it becomes very difficult for uh, for a month or so in the summer, just depending on the shad, to really uh, to really catch those fish that get they get so dialed into that. But there you go. If you look at the back blade on that Death Stalker. It's actually about the same size as that minnow, which really helps too. So it's not a minnow, by the way, it's a shad, but get that guy out of here. And they're just loaded out here on this point. There's a point right there and then it extends out and they're all over it. And if you look out to the right side of the boat, you can see both sides here. And look, if we get full screen for you. So all of these dots that have these shadows, those are all the white bass. Isn't that crazy how they cast those shadows? They're kind of high off the bottom. That's, that's why the shadows are so big. But you'll also notice that they're, it's moving through really quickly. So you'll see like more constant action if it's bass. Like they'll kind of sit in one spot. Um, but notice there's like no cover out here. There's really no hard bottom. They're literally just using the point itself to kind of trap these shad and feed on them. 
and they're just moving around chasing them you know as the shad move through but that's one uh, one way you can just sit here pay attention to your your electronics and know which direction to cast and uh, and when exactly to cast when they're really out there so there's white bass they're shadows and also I have chiggers so technique I'm using now is I'm, I'm letting it sink to the bottom and I'm just kind of bound I'm like yo-yoing it coming back in just trying to just go up and down through through the water column because they're not they're not hitting the surface anymore yeah, but I'm not I'm not sure if they're I mean they're really not locked on the bottom but they're they're just chasing those balls of shad so just to optimize you know the water column trying to hit most of it just kind of yo-yoing it oh there's a bite chasing it oh there we go if i feel one biting it i'll make the the yo-yos a little bit tighter so that they have a better chance of of getting it so it's not moving around as much oh, i lost them right there But if you're moving it big time up and down, a large mouth has no problem eating that, but a, but a white bass with a real small mouth, they'll have a harder time keying in on it. Come on, get it, yeah. Felt you getting it. Right up there in that shallow spot, you're gonna be small. Damn it. I think I'm gonna give it one more cast out here. My retinas are about to burn out of my face. It's tough. No sunglasses. Oh my gosh. Right there it's both. Largey! <laughs> Come here, buddy. I couldn't resist catching another largemouth on a on the recon, mini recon. They're all on these points. For sure. I think there might be a couple more in there. This one hit it a few times too. See, you, buddy. It's very windy and sunny now, but we have accomplished our goal of catching our white bass. Caught a few largemouth. Just had to give me a little green fish action in there and I'm ready to go in now, y'all. It is uh, 7.30, all the fish are starting to move deeper and they'll come back up and they'll feed the same way they were this morning in the evening time, that low light time. And then at night, as that full moon comes up and maybe right in the middle of the day, uh, deep, you know, but uh, the offshore game, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of work. So this is something that I feel like everybody can do. You can go out to the lake, go out to the pond really early, get that first couple of hours of action or late evening, and then just just put it up during the middle of the day if you're, if you're in Texas, especially when it's super hot. So we gotta go clean some fish now. We're gonna go make some golden crispies, baby. Get out of here, spider. Yeah. If you've never cleaned a fish before, I'm about to show you uh, a bass species, that is, not a catfish. Catfish, different story. So I always like to let them sit on ice for a little while, preferably like overnight. But I uh, caught them early this morning, and we we're just going to go ahead and do them now. They are pretty stiff, so... That is good. Just firms that meat up, makes it easier to clean, and then I think the, the meat just, it just tastes better when you start cooking it. Got myself a nice little uh, wooden ottoman here. Uh, this, or some sort of desk. This is throwaway furniture from the treehouse. Serving a great purpose today. So you're gonna go in right behind the gills, just down to the spine. I'll always wanna make sure you're trying to get up high there on that, on that back. And I like to flip the fish around and then just push, go down to the spine and push outward. You gotta be real careful with the electric fillet knife so you don't uh, don't go through the spine. You kind of pulse it, just to be careful. Find that spine, feel it, and then just 
go down and when you almost get to the end, flip it over and then you just want to go right under the skin and push. The whole purpose of a fillet knife is that it's flexible. So you got a little flexibility in the blade. That way you can push down, really get under there and come out with it and it gets just about every little piece of meat in there. Then I just like to cut that rib cage out. It's done. There's one. Uh, it's creative. Let's take a look at this. Isn't that nice? This table has gone through so much. It's from William Sonoma. How is it? It's one of the finer fish cleaning stations out there. If you want this table, you can get it. Link in the description. Come pick it up. At lakelifeusefurniture.com. Also subscribe to our other channel because we're we're almost to 80,000 subs, I believe. Yep. So link down below. Check it out. Help us get to 100,000 subs. It is a good day, y'all. Feels good to get up early, get out there, get on some fish, and have them ready for dinner. And OSG is giving us the go to put them in the grease, which is. My favorite way to eat them, I call them the golden crispies, because when you cook them right, it, there's nothing better than a good fried fish. But while we're waiting on the grease to get hot, here's a flashback of what happened yesterday. I woke up super early in the morning and there was a fox just chilling in the yard, kind of stalking the chickens. Didn't seem to be afraid of me. Ready to dangle. We got to the warehouse and then Rob took entirely too long getting his tackle ready. Then we got onto the road and we realized it was a full-blown full moon and the fishing was going to not be good. There it is, wha-bam! The sun is in full effect. It's already 85 and a half degrees. We have no water. We're in search. We're in search of the water out here. Why today's 100 plus. Why do you keep passing every single gas station? He looks so red right now. <laughs> I am very, oh am I? You're just lit up with a red glow. That's what I'm talking about. Like you just came out of an easy bake oven. And I'm pregnant. <laughs> You're pregnant? Yeah. Well, how'd you get pregnant? <laughs> what the? <laughs> then we arrived to the lake to find that there was tall grass and I was wearing sandals, which probably meant I was getting chiggers. Another hour unloading the kayaks and then we got into the baits. So in my MTB box, I had a Chase Baits Wiggle Bomb, a Lucky John X Gear crankbait, an Abregast Hula Popper. When's the last time you saw a daggum Hula Popper? A Biospawn Exo Swim. And then I also had a 10,000 fish Koshi Bug, brand new, paired with a Hardbaits Jig Dead Bolt. After not having my GoPro rolling and then missing a five pounder on my Hula Popper, I landed this guy. Come here, buddy. A five pound blast it. That pretty much wrapped up the fishing day because then it was 102 degrees, so we went back to the warehouse where some new merch came in. <laughs> Lake Louisville White Bass Bash Champion. I then proceeded back to the treehouse to make sure the chickens had not been eaten. They had not been eaten. And then I discovered I did get those chiggers. It was a tough day. Pretty much past 8 a.m. pond fishing in the kayaks in the wind. It just wasn't working out. I had way more fun this morning, besides getting to hang out with my buddies. Talking about the grease here, a mixture tonight of half canola oil and half very high-end, 500 degree smoke point avocado oil. And OSG has graciously let me use this. I, I don't know how much this stuff is, but it, I know it's pricey. When it's got a special cap on it on the end like that, you better ask first. Back in the kitchen with OSG. I'm gonna steal your your Back thunder. Back in here. the kitchen with OSG. I just gotta do it. Sorry. Hi. Hit us one time with a babe. What are you doing in here? All right. So this is egg white. You wanted to do milk, but I used the last bit of it on the grits. So we're gonna have to improvise here. So we're doing egg white, even though it doesn't look like egg whites. And what do we got in here? The flour uh, spice mixture. What's um, going on? Pretty much all flour. There is a little bit of cornmeal in there, and I use that SPG from Cosmo, Cosmo Q. Cosmo Q. And I put some smoked paprika in there. Ah, look bit. at you! Ready to hear that sizzle pop? Sizzle! Yes! And OSG, just to offset, 
She has made us a delicious uh, healthy juice salad. Get heavy greens. Because I'm going to pretty much be eating that right there. That's great. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the grease. Before I pop that, I'm going to put a little extra Cosmo Q SPG on top of here. Mmm. Hot. Just pulled the first batch out. I'm not that excited to tell you the truth. Don't think, I think there's a couple factors going on here. But we'll just give it a taste first. Got the grease too hot on the initial insertion. Kind of flash fried it. That's just a lot of burnt taste. I am not excited about that. Usually the first batch though is uh, is the worst. Then the second one is the best. And the third one is, yeah, that's how it goes. Woo! Second batch looking tremendously better. That one's not bad right there. You know, flakiness is on point. Just a little burnt on the outside. Getting better though. That's the golden nugget right there. Yes, sir. Just look at the difference here in these two specimens. Those came out much better. You can see some of the SPG in there. Say OSG did a good job on that breading. That's a that's a good, you know, medium size thickness. I like a little crunch to it. But I don't like like gnawing on batter, and I don't like it to be loose, like uncovered in places. This is a pastime for me in the summer. Going out, catching these white bass, crappie, whatever it is, and just putting them in the grease, having a couple cold ones with some friends, family, and just enjoying the fish that you caught. You got to love it. Okay, what about some grits with it? Mm-hmm. Grits and a little salad. Uh, come on now, come on. Gills and grits. Okay, oh, here we go, here we go. Hmm, there it is right there. Much better, y'all. Oh, the extra SPG, that stuff is awesome. There's a little bit of sugar in it too, I think. That's almost like fried chicken. I know, it is. Man, that's good. <laughs> Serve with your favorite adult beverage and you have a good summer evening. Oh, I hate when that happens. Get that on out of there, there we go. It is time to go enjoy the fruits of my labor today. Actually, the, the fish of my labor. Hit the like button, y'all, for classic golden crispies. Go ahead and just smash it. And I gotta say thanks again to MTV for sponsoring today's dangle and many of the dangles on this channel. They are a fantastic partner and I love those guys over there. Thank you very much MTV. I'm gonna go enjoy this delicious fried fish y'all because I may not get it for a very long time. I am leaving the country very soon with Lunkers TV. We're going very very far away. More to that. More on that to come. So subscribe right here to the channel so you don't miss a single video. And I'll see you right back here on the next one.